John 1, verses 1 through 18. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Uh, through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or of a husband's, or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him. He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Out of his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God but the one and only Son who, himself, who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. John 1, verses 1 through 18, God bless the reading of his word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. John 1, 1 to 2. This is the beginning of the Gospel of John. I wonder if the beginning of the Gospel of John sounds familiar to you? There is another book in the Bible which begins with the same three words. In the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Genesis 1, 1 through 3. John uses two similar expressions with Genesis 1. In the beginning and the word God. Let's focus on the way God creates in Genesis 1. And God, then, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. God creates by speaking. God creates by speech. God creates by using words. Seven times when God creates in Genesis 1, he uses words. God speaks, and then it is created. At creation, the earth is formless and empty. Darkness covers the surface of the deep. The first act of creation by God is to speak into the darkness and create the light. In John 1, there is also an emphasis on God creating by bringing light into darkness. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. John 1 4 through 5. Just as at the beginning of creation, God shines his light into our darkness. In John 1, God shines his light into our darkness through Jesus. Jesus now brings God's light. Jesus brings life, and that life is the light of all people. Jesus shines his light into the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The Greek word that is translated as overcome can also be translated as understand or comprehend. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness does not understand it. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness does not comprehend it. In addition, the darkness rejects the light of Jesus. The darkness tries to overcome this light. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. John 1, 10 to 11. Today is the Sunday before Epiphany Day, January the 6th. 
Epiphany is when we celebrate the coming of the Magi to the baby Jesus in Bethlehem. This is also when our Eastern Orthodox friends celebrate their Christmas. Uh, this is reported in Matthew 2. King Herod tries to trick the Magi so that he can find his competitor, the King of the Jews, the baby born in Bethlehem. When the Magi return by another route, Herod gets angry. He kills all the baby boys under two in Bethlehem in his attempt to get rid of this king of the Jews. There are elements in the Christmas story that remind us that people reject the light that Jesus brings. Jesus claims that he brings God's light into our darkness. Do we choose the light that Jesus brings into our lives or do we choose the darkness of our mere human efforts without God. Ted is a missionary in the Dominican Republic. He rides his bicycle home every day and shares this story of needing to choose between the bright path and or a dark path on his way home. I like to ride my bicycle along a familiar route that follows a circuit of seven or eight miles. When I reach one point, I have to decide whether to turn right and continue in the countryside or turn left and return home. One day as I reach the point of decision, I look toward uh, home and saw the black clouds with occasional lightning and thunder. Um, when I looked at to the right away from home, uh, the sky was blue with only occasional light clouds. I continued on my longer route and returned home later without feeling a single drop of rain. That decision was easy. When Jesus was on earth, he spoke of a similar decision between light and darkness. Why is that decision not as easy in our daily lives as it was for me that day on my bicycle? Jesus said that it is because our actions are evil and we fear exposure. We prefer to stay in the dark and stumble again and again. However, Jesus is the light. If we choose to stay in darkness and avoid the light, we separate ourselves from Jesus. When we turn toward the light, we can enjoy the way of living Christ offers us. We have a choice. We stumble in the dark or walk in the light. Jesus shines his light into our darkness. Do we stumble in the dark or do we walk in the light? In Genesis 1, God sees the darkness. God decides to do something about the darkness. What does God do? And God said, let there be light, and there was light. There is chaos, there is formlessness, there is emptiness, there is darkness. For six days, God speaks. As God speaks during these six days, creation is formed. There is order in God's creation. There is substance to God's creation. There is light. On the sixth day, God creates human beings in the image of God. Human beings are the final step in God's process of creation. We are the crowning glory of God's creation. We are created in God's image. Somehow, now as human beings, we find ourselves in darkness. In Genesis 3, human beings choose the path of darkness. In John 1, the Apostle John now tells us that Jesus has now come to bring us light in our darkness. Jesus brings us the life that God intended human beings to have. This life is the light of all mankind. In him was life and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. In John 1, God speaks again, as at the beginning of creation. This time, God speaks through a human being. This time, God speaks through the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. The Greek word logos is translated as the word. Logos does not mean a mere word or a mere speech. 
Logos is a speech or word that is profound and full of meaning. In the beginning, God speaks into the darkness of creation and creates light. Now God speaks into the darkness of people and creates light through Jesus. God speaks into our darkness through the Logos, through the word, a human being named Jesus. At Christmas, we do not merely celebrate the birth of Jesus as a baby. At Christmas, we celebrate the birth of a human being who is the Word. The Word brings a message that is profound and full of meaning. Jesus is God bringing light to our darkness. Through Jesus, God speaks forth light into our darkness. Through Jesus, God restores order to our chaos. Through Jesus, God redeems our world of sin and darkness and starts his initiative of bringing us back to God and God's light. Through Jesus, we can become the children of God once again. He has come to the earth which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of human, natural descent or of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. John 1, 11 through 13. Billy Graham used to tell this story of a man and his son playing near an anthill. A father and son are playing catch in a field where some construction is taking place. The son bends over and says, Dad, look at all those ants. Suddenly, the son notices that a bulldozer is working its way uh, towards them. Dad, we have to save the ants. We have to pick them up and take them to a place where they will be safe. But the father responded, Sorry, Jim. Unfortunately, they wouldn't understand our actions and would bite us. So the son shouts at the ants, Save yourselves! A bulldozer is coming. They don't understand our language, Jim. The son begins to cry as he watches the ants moving around unaware of their impending doom. Seeing this as a teaching moment, the dad says, Jim, the only way we could save them would be for you to become an ant and go down among them and in their own language warn them. Then maybe they would understand and be saved. Jim looks at his dad and says, can we do that? No, son. But that is what God did when he sent Jesus into the world to become a man, to speak our language and to show us his love and the way of salvation. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father full of grace and truth. John 1.14 John 1.14 tells us how God shines his light through Jesus. Jesus, God's word, becomes flesh, becomes a human being, and lives among us. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Uh, the New Testament Greek reads as this, the word became flesh and pitched his tent among us. God becomes one of us. The Apostle John also tells us that when we see Jesus, we see the glory of God. The glory of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. God speaks through Jesus. Jesus comes from the Father, full of grace and truth. When we see Jesus, we see God in all his glory. When we see Jesus, we see God's truth communicated to us. God pours of himself into Jesus. When we see Jesus we see God. The light that Jesus shines is the glorious light of God, restoring order to our chaos and creating something out of our emptiness. I remember the first time I ever did some serious camping. It was in Australia with a group of young adults from the church. We pitched our tents at a place near the ocean. That night it was quite dark you could hear the loud noise of the waves. I was overwhelmed. I never had such an experience of camping. 
However, I was so grateful that we all brought our flashlights to shine in the darkness of the night. I was also grateful that I was with my friends. I was not alone. As according to the New Testament Greek, the word became flesh and pitched his tent among us. When Jesus pitches his tent among us, he shines God's glorious flashlight into our dark lives like the only son of a father. He comes from the father full of grace and truth. I pray that we will find Jesus' light in 2022. May Jesus shine his light into our dark paths. Amen.